Welcome, everybody, to our inaugural weekly review series of an ongoing seasonal anime. That's right, the first one we're doing is for Junie Tyson's Zodiac War, which we have already reviewed the first chapter of the manga. You may have already listened to that review before, and we were just very interested in continuing our thoughts on the Junie Tyson series, especially since we're in such an interesting position where the light novel and the manga and the anime are all coming out over here at the same time. We thought it'd be really cool to follow along with the anime and compare it with the manga and light novel as we go along. And you might be wondering, wait a minute, Lum. On the Twitter poll, Junie Tyson got the least number of votes. Wait, what won the Twitter poll? <laughs> Why aren't you doing the Ancient Magus's Bride? That's what won the Twitter poll. We are going to do Ancient Magus's Bride. In fact, we already reviewed the first three episodes way back in July when we first watched them. Unless we should review them again, which wouldn't make sense at all. Yeah. Because it's the exact same episodes, except now with the openings and endings. We didn't go that in-depth with them, admittedly. But since we did touch upon elements from those first three episodes already, I think that we will start our weekly reviews of The Ancient Magus' Bride with episode four. In the meantime, though, again, with such unique circumstances that Junie Tyson has that just make it so interesting to review, we couldn't pass up the opportunity to review it. And this first episode made a very strong impression. And I dare say, between the manga and the light novel and this anime, I like how the anime started the most. Yeah, the anime, I think, had the best take, for sure. Especially since it really fleshes out, uh, you don't know, Shishi, I think? Is her name? Yes, Ino no Shishi, the fighter of the boar, yeah. the one who kills in abundance. So What was really cool about how they presented her in the first episode and compared to other versions is the amount of detail they go into her backstory. We actually see a lot more of her training of how she became the killer that she is. We see a very lengthy sequence where she is fighting a bunch of goons that her father hired. And she fights them to the death. And when one of them asks her to spare him, she does. And then at home, her father chastises her, kills the guy in front of him, and tells her, do not leave anyone alive. Never sur accept surrenders. It was very interesting and a good establishing of why she has the value she has. And even more so was her backstory with her sister. Because... We know in all versions that her sister was originally the one who was supposed to participate in the Zodiac War. And in the other versions, we learn that she had killed her sister. In those versions, it's presented as more literally. She literally killed her sister directly. But in this version, in the anime, we get a very lengthy flashback showing her psychologically manipulate her sister over a long period of time into never being satisfied with how much she kills, breaking down her spirit, her sanity. To the point where she literally fucking kills herself. <laughs> yeah, she starts being unsatisfied with how much she kills, but she also starts growing so much more regrets. And it's mainly because, you know, no, she, she forces her to kill people that she loves. And, like, she forces her to kill the boy she liked. And she forces her to kill the staff in the family. And it just slowly breaks her that she has to kill people she cares about. And it's very interesting because, you know, she's presented as someone who doesn't think twice about killing animals. In fact, in her introduction scene, we see that she's gloating about killing a bunch of foxes. But as she slowly starts killing more and more people and starts not satisfying her sister, and she has to kill more and more people in order to satisfy her, and just seeing how it consistently breaks her down until the point where she has no other option because it won't satisfy her to kill her, and she's so mentally broken that she has to kill herself. It's a gut-wrenching sequence. It's a really strong flashback that really, really strongly characterizes 
how malicious a villain you know no she she is so they do a really great job with presenting her character a lot of her dialogue is lifted from the light novel and this includes like her inner thoughts her inner monologues and that's something i'm glad they keep instead of putting it on a random side character like the reporter in the manga who i am not sure why he was created for that why is he there he doesn't need to be there he's not in the anime version so yeah i'm glad that they focused on her perspective because that just makes like her backstory and her characterization just so much tighter stronger we get into the mind of this character and we see her downfall beautifully presented throughout the course of this episode very interesting very cool yeah definitely but i think what's very striking about the show is just it's really well made there's really great animation and i'm not just talking about the flashy like battle sequences yeah like there are good battle moments for sure the fighting scenes are really well animated and directed particularly what Bohr imagines her fight with Rabbit will turn out to be. But they're just the small touches of character animation, the smaller, subtler moments that I think are just so well done. What in particular, I think that Usagi's movements are just perfect because they capture the feel of a rabbit, of a rabbit's movements. It's like subtle, but you can see that for many of the characters, the how they move and like how they express themselves in body language draw illusions to their respective animal. Ida no Shishi, the least so, but with Rabbit and then with the dog character, more heavily so. Really, really cool. One interesting design choice with Rabbit, if I'm going to address that. Since generally most of the character designs are pretty similar to the manga and the original designs for the light novel. Mm. But Rabbit's tail is a lot bigger and poofier for some reason in the show. Yeah, I, I was wondering about that. I was like, huh, did I misremember this from reading the manga? No, I, I think, yeah, it was bigger. Mm -hmm. So that was very interesting, but I'm not really sure why they made the design choice. Maybe they thought it would look cooler? Who knows? And once again in this show, the design of the poison pearls, not even pearls, uh, just... Yeah, they still use that weird, like, uh, spiky design. Yeah, except now it's a little more mushroom-shaped. It's, like, even bigger. Yeah, it's like, okay, why not just go with the small bead like they did in, like, the light novel? Yeah, I'm still very confused on why they <laughs> felt the need to overcomplicate the designs of those. Maybe they just thought it would look cooler. Mm -hmm. And we just have to assume that these people have practiced their deep throating to like a systematic design that they can like swallow giant objects. I don't know. In general, everything <clears throat> from the light novel is kept and just even expanded upon. The one exception, though, is in this version, Duodecable, as I guess his name is pronounced, I had pronounced it Duodecible in our previous review, but I think in the show it's pronounced Duodecable, I guess. Yeah. He does not slit his stomach in this version yeah. to show that you can, that's how you should remove the jewels. Like he says how to do it, but he doesn't do it himself. Yes. That's yeah. one moment of characterization of this character that I felt was missing in a way that I think was unfortunate. Honestly, I, I just want—I just wanted to see him like do it, just to see how it would look animated. Yeah, because <laughs> that—that that was some weird shit. Certainly, that wouldn't have been too graphic for the show. I'm it sure wouldn't have. Late it, nights. it wouldn't have. So it's a shame that was not included because it establishes, hey, this character can do bodily harm to himself but he's okay because he's this weird spiritual being it's just a flesh wound he'll walk it off mm -hmm. and it also shows that these characters are going to be willing to callously kill or callously like slit each other's stomachs open in order to get this jewel but also there is a way out for them to survive by just having the jewel removed from their stomach they don't necessarily have to die they can do that and that's a way they can survive couldn't they just go hunt down a surgeon and have them like cut open their bellies no because they're fighting within this close space oh right they are shit and everyone in the town is dead Oh, fuck, yeah. Yeah, so I guess they do have... The only way to do that, though, would be to work together. 
But overall, the production and the character designs and the animation are just really strong and solid. Which is very incredible considering that this is the first production, I believe, the studio of the yeah. show has worked on. Yeah, Grafenica, I think, is their name. If yes. I recall, they did. They have worked on uh, a lot of in-betweens for various shows and a few openings for animes. But yeah, this is their first full TV anime production. It's very impressive. They are definitely a studio to look out for, at least in terms of the first impression they're giving here. Yeah. I was a bit concerned at first that Anisio Kisim work is being done by such a new studio, but they pulled this off flawlessly. They really did. One thing that's weird to me about the translation, though, in the subtitles, is that they are using Juni Taizen to describe the tournament instead of yeah. the translation of Zodiac War. I find that odd since Zodiac War is the subtitle for the English language versions of the show. Which is, yeah... You might as well use that. Just call it the Zodiac War. Don't need to be a wee. Yeah, all according to Keikaku. Looking up the director, he also directed Mirai Niki, another battle to the death kind of show. Yeah. That show's writing was a lot more questionable than I think we can expect from Judy Tyson. Yeah, which... Judy Tyson has a good writer, so we're good. People have made the comment... In reviews, especially on the A and N reviews, that oh, this is a trashy battle royale show, but it's a fun trashy show. I want to disagree in the sense that this is not going to be a very deep. Oh, show. it's not going to be fact, deep. In fact, it's going to be quite juvenile, I suspect. But I think it'll be a fun action show, yeah. and certainly it knows how to do really interesting characterization, especially with the flashback sequence showing how Boar mentally tortured and drove her sister to suicide, which yeah. is yeah, amazing, <laughs> That's amazing, amazing flashback sequence. Yeah, I know you mentioned this uh, on our Black Clover discussion, but yeah, I think I think they're gonna the structure of this show is gonna end up being like twelve, thirteen episodes. Need each episode's gonna focus on each one of the zodiacs, and kind of by the end of the episode, they're either gonna die or survive, or something's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I guess like to answer the big question of like how they're gonna make a season two for this that we had like during our manga discussion for this. Well, it seems that Nisio Eason's already working on a sequel novel to this that's gonna come out right after this season of the anime ends. Mm -hmm. So I think the assumption now is that Grafinica is gonna adapt that novel for season two. Most likely. Yeah. So there's our answer on how this will become an ongoing franchise. Overall, this was certainly a more fun beginning to uh, this show than any of the Fate <laughs> franchise's first episodes, which are very slow and honestly very dull at times. Well, why you gotta hate it by Fate, Sid? I'm sorry. This was much more fun. It gets to what is like the most fun aspects of the Fate franchise, and it just focuses on those without all the, dare I say it, bullshit. Yeah, that's fair. I'm really enjoying the show, and if you want a good action show for the season, I think you can do no wrong. What I'm planning to do with the show is just to focus on the content that each episode corresponds to when I'm comparing it to the other versions. Yeah. I have only read the first two chapters of the manga and the first two chapters of the light novel so far. When the light novel comes out... On October 10th, I will buy it so that I can follow along as the show goes forward and reads through that. And I will also be keeping up with the manga. And then every, you know, episode review we do, I'm going to be comparing the each episode to the manga counterpart and the light novel counterpart. Mm. And with the rate of releases, we have no clue, like, how far ahead the anime might go in front of the manga. But if we always have a light novel as a basis, then we always have something to compare it yeah. to. And to me, that's just the most interesting thing. I think since Akira Akatsuki is uh, doing this as it's also airing in Japan, I think he's trying to stick to a weekly schedule for this. So yeah, hopefully he's going to get like close to each episode's worth of content each week. But who knows? Like he He's in Jump Plus, so he doesn't have to stick to a schedule. This episode corresponds to the first chapter and half of the second chapter yeah so and the yeah. first three chapters of the light novel so i'm assuming the manga is going to fall behind at some point mm -hmm. I, I don't think akatsuki's going to be able to draw that much each week most likely but it yeah. also depends on how they plan to pace the show we have no clue how they will structure it and it will have to depend 
on the content itself, not necessarily any arbitrary. You have to adapt X number of pages of the novel. Yeah, they're not going to go anything that, like, technical. Yeah. Like, I I'm sure they're going to adapt the entire novel in 13 episodes because it's not that long of a novel to begin with. But yeah, I, I, they're going to go a bit more, like, leeway on, like, well, how much they're adapting each episode. Yes. But overall, I think that does it for our thoughts on the first episode of Zodiac War. Unless you have anything else to add. Um, no, I mean, this was a great start to the anime. It wowed me even more than the first chapter of the manga. And I liked the first chapter of the manga, but damn, this impressed me even more. Definitely. I'm really excited to follow along with the show. I had a fun time watching it. And there are a lot of great shows out this season. But this is among the good ones as well. Yup, definitely. Alright, and that does it for our first review. And I guess we'll see you for a review of episode 2 and the corresponding manga and light novel content. Woo.